Good morning, everybody. We're glad you joined us today. As always, we like to start our service with a word of prayer. So if you would please bow your heads and join me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together this morning to worship you. We pray that as we go about our lives, that you would be with us, that you would guide us and comfort us and shower your love on us as you always do. Lord, we pray that as the factory workers go back to work in the coming weeks, that you will be with them and protect them and keep them safe, as well as their families. Father, as always, we pray for Pastor Dana this morning as she delivers your message to us. May her words find our hearts and our minds. May you use those words to guide us and to comfort us and to show us how to spread your love around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I'm going to share with you from Genesis chapter 6 through 9. The Bible says that in the time of Noah, men were wicked. God saw the evil thoughts of man's heart and that they were steering him away from God. And God's heart was broken because of man's wickedness. Man was so evil that God said that he would destroy man from earth. But then God thought about Noah. Noah loved God and sought to obey him. In Genesis 6, 8, the Bible says that Noah found grace in God's sight. And in 6, 9, we're told that Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. Now, Noah had three sons and three daughter-in-laws and a wife. There were eight total in their family. And at the end of the story, you will find out that God tells them to replenish the earth. Noah's sons were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. God told Noah in Genesis 6, 14 through 7, 6, that he was going to destroy the earth. And he instructed Noah to build a large boat. He would use this boat to preserve life on earth. The structure of the boat was explained by God, and he told Noah what type of wood to use and how large the ark would be. This was given in the measurements of a cubit, about 18 inches. This means that the ark was to be 450 feet long and 45 feet wide and 45 feet tall, and it would be divided into three levels. Then God told Noah that he would preserve his covenant with Noah, and when the ark was finished, he was to enter into it with his wife and his sons and their wives. And God brought to Noah animals. He brought to him groups of seven pairs of clean animals, male and female. And he brought to him two of the unclean, male and female. And Noah was also to take food along with them into the ark. In Genesis 7, 7 through 24, God told Noah and his family to enter the ark they waited for seven days before the flood began. And then the Bible says in 7, 12 and 17 that it rained actively for 40 days. The earth was flooded for 150 days or almost six months. Then we're told in Genesis 8, 1 that God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock in the ark. And so he sent a wind to blow across the earth and the floodwaters began to recede. And after 150 days at sea, the ark came to rest on Mount Ararat. After another 140 days, Noah released a bird to help him know if it was possible to leave the ark. The first bird that was released was a raven, and it left and returned continually until the water was receded. Then he released a dove. The dove was actually sent out three times. The first time, it did not find a place to rest. It returned to the ark. Seven days later, Noah sent the dove out again, but this time it brought back an olive branch. And another week later, Noah again sent the dove out, and this time the dove did not return. This was an indication to Noah that it was time to leave the ark. So Noah and his children released all the animals from the ark, and when they exited the ark, they built an altar to worship the Lord. In Genesis 8:21, God tells Noah that he will never again flood the earth. 
and kill all living things. And he says the rainbow will be a sign of his covenant. And then God blessed Noah and his sons. And he told them to be fruitful, to multiply, and to replenish the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So lately we've been doing nightly devotions with Eleanor. And the book that we've been reading or has questions that you can ask. Um, at the end of the devotional time. And so recently we read to her the story of Noah's Ark. And when I was reading her this story, one of the questions the book gave at the end was what did God give Noah to show him that he cares about him? What did God give Noah to show him that he cared? And I was waiting for Eleanor to answer and she was thinking about her answer when um, she pointed to the book and she pointed right to the boat. And she said, God gave Noah the boat to show him he cared. And I thought, what um, a true answer, right? At first I was like, oh, no, no, no. Uh, God gave him the rainbow. And then I was like, but really, God gave Noah the ark. See, God did give Noah the rainbow, but he also gave him a boat to carry him through the storm. God already knew the total devastation that the flood would bring. He knew that it would essentially wipe clean the surface of the earth. All living creatures on the earth and in the sky would perish. But God saw Noah and he saw Noah's family. Noah found favor with God. He was a righteous man who walked humbly before God. And therefore, God gave him the great task of building the ark and hurting or keeping the animals and then of weathering the storm. God does not play favorites in the way that we think. He isn't just like, oh, that one's pretty or, oh, I like the way that one sings. The reason that Noah found favor with God was because he was faithful to God. The scripture is very clear about that. He was righteous and lived according to God's commands. The scriptures say that he walked faithfully with God. Now, I'm not preaching prosperity gospel. I'm not saying that if we just do A, B, or C for God, we will be spared from troubles in this world. In fact, scripture is very clear about that. Jesus, to his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 33, says... In this world, you will have troubles. He's basically telling his disciples, I can promise you, you will have troubles in this world. But do not fear, for I have overcome the world. Jesus himself has overcome the world. So we know that just because we're faithful does not mean that we won't experience life storms. Just because we're faithful doesn't mean the storms will be little instead of big. But because we are faithful, we know that God will be with us to weather the storms and to come out the other side. What Eleanor said is true. God did give Noah the boat to show him that he cared. He provided a way for Noah to weather the storm. Noah was faithful to God and God was faithful to Noah. Think about Noah. He, his wife, his sons and their wives we're on the ark for many days. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights, but it was over 100 days that he was in the ark before the waters receded. That is a long time to be stuck with the same people and the same animals in one small space. I imagine that Noah and his family probably felt a little bit like what we're feeling right now. When the ark stopped floating and it came to a rest on the mountain, Noah sent out ravens to see if the floodwaters were gone. But the ravens just kept circling in the sky and coming back. And then Noah set out a dove. And the first time, the dove just came back empty. And then the second time, the dove came back with an olive branch, a symbol of God wanting to restore right relationship with the world and humanity. And then he sent the dove out a final time, and it did not come back. And Noah knew it was time to open the ark. When Noah opened the ark, he and his family and the animals went outside and saw the land was no longer flooded. They offered a sacrifice to God and God was pleased. And then God gave Noah a promise. This was referred to as a covenant. In the Bible, a covenant is an agreement that brings about committed relationship between God and his people or between a person and another person. Let me say that again. In the Bible, a covenant is a commitment an agreement that brings about a committed relationship between two people. A committed and faithful relationship. God was making an agreement with Noah and with the earth. God would continue to be faithful to draw his creation back to him. 
back to wholeness in him. He made a covenant never to flood the earth in its entirety again, but also a covenant symbolizing his faithfulness to his creation. God gave a symbol to Noah of that covenant relationship. That symbol was the rainbow. We see the rainbow as a symbol of God's promises. It reminds us, and I love, I love this because a rainbow almost always comes after a storm that we see, right? That reminds us that no matter how tough the waters, no matter how long the rain, no matter how dark the storm, we know that God is faithful and he will be faithful to us. We know that he will provide shelter to us. We are not promised that we will have a trouble-free life. We are not promised that the storms will be little instead of big raging hurricanes. We're not promised uh, easy, carefree life, but we are promised this. We're given a promise or a covenant that God will be faithful to us. We live in a broken world full of people who have free will and free choice, a creation as a whole that's broken. But God is faithful and he made a covenant to keep bringing us and his creation back into committed relationship with him. He made a covenant to be faithful to us. When we remain faithful to him, he is with us in the midst of the storm. Just as he provided the ark or that boat for Noah, he provides shelter for us. He stands with us. He walks with us. He holds our hands. Just as Jesus said in John, in this life, we will have troubles, but we do not need to fear. We don't have to have fear when those troubles come. We don't have to sink into a pit of despair or depression when those troubles come. We don't have to let the waters overtake us. We are not overcome with fear because we know that Christ overcame the world. It is through his death and his resurrection that we are offered reconciliation and hope. That reconciliation and hope is what allows Christ to triumph over evil and brokenness in this world. Christ has overcome the world, and therefore we know that with God, we too can overcome. You see, God gave Noah that boat or that ark to weather the storm, but Noah didn't know the outcome of the storm. He didn't know what that outcome would be when he got into the boat. He did it faithfully. He didn't know how long the storm would last. It kept going on and on and on. And all he knew was that he had to be faithful to the God that had been faithful to him. He had to be faithful and he knew that God would in turn be faithful to him. And then God was. God was there. He dried up the water and he brought back the sun. He repopulated the earth. And ultimately, he gave Noah a symbol of his promises and his faithfulness. A symbol that God would always be faithful to us and be with us during the storms of this world, the storms of this life. These days, it feels like the storm might go on forever and ever. Maybe it feels like you can't just take one more rock of the boat or perhaps like the sun is never going to shine again. Some of you may be, trying, or may be feeling like you're trying to weather more than just one storm at this time. The story of Noah gives us hope. This story reminds us that when we walk faithfully with God, he is faithful to us. In him, we find our shelter. In him, we find our hope. In him, we find how not only to survive, but to thrive through the storm. Jesus has overcome this world. He has overcome the storm. The final war between good and evil has already been waged, and we know that our God is victorious in the end. This week, I want to challenge you to look around you. Ask, look around and see. Ask what ark or what boat God might be providing you to weather this storm. Maybe it's a specific scripture. Maybe it's time spent in prayer, or perhaps it's a worship song listening to sermons. Maybe it's a Bible study or a small group or a church member reaching out. What ark, what boat has God provided you to weather this storm, to shelter you in the midst of this storm? Noah did not know that the end of the storm was coming. He did not know that there would be a rainbow. He was faithful, believing God would be faithful to him. And God was. But we have this promise. We know of his faithfulness. 
We know that we have hope that will not rage, that the storm will not rage forever. We have hope that the ultimate victory belongs to God. So today I challenge you to spend a moment thinking of a time when God has been faithful to you. If you cannot think of a time that he's been faithful to you, think of times we know of in scripture or history when he has been faithful. Faithful to Noah, faithful to Abraham, to the Israelites, to Gideon, to Sarah, to Hannah, to the disciples, to Paul, and to the early church. If you cannot think of a time that he's been faithful to you, I challenge you to read these scriptures, these stories from scripture. I challenge you to talk to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Ask them to share a time when he's been faithful with them. If you right now can think of a time when he's been faithful to you, I encourage you to write of that faithfulness in the comments to this video. Post a note to your brothers or sisters in Christ so they can read it and can hold on to that promise. If he has been faithful to my brother and sister in Christ, he will be faithful to me. If you know of an ark or a boat, something that God's given you this week to help you weather the storm and you're already thinking of it, comment that, write it in the comments so that others can begin to think of ways that maybe God is also providing them something to shelter them from the storm. God is faithful. Maybe one of your brothers and sisters can't think of a time when God's been faithful to them. Maybe they're scared because they can't remember. Or maybe it's you. Maybe you can't remember. This is why testimony is so important. If God has been faithful to you in the midst of this storm or even this specific storm, I encourage you to share it this week. Share it on social media, in person or virtually. Write it down and send it to a brother or sister in Christ or someone who you know is struggling in the midst of this storm. Share so that others can hear of God's faithfulness and believe in his promises. Your testimony, this testimony of God's faithfulness is a proverbial rainbow. When we testify to God's faithfulness to us, this testimony is a rainbow reminding others and ourselves of God's promises and his faithfulness to us. What is a promise that God has made you during this time? How are you holding on to this? Share this. Finally, I encourage you to look for signs of God's faithfulness. Just like Noah sent out the ravens and the doves, ask God to give you signs. Don't stay quiet. Call out to him. Look for ways in which he is being faithful to you during these times, even the smallest of ways, and then post those up. Put them around you as reminders that he will be faithful, that the storm will come to an end, that God will be faithful, and that his promises will stand. We have hope that God's promises are true. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the rainbow um, that you gave Noah as a, a promise of your faithfulness and of your goodness, of a desire for relationship um, and for bringing creation back into right relationship with you. We thank you that you gave Noah the ability to weather that storm. We thank you that you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to overcome this world, to bring what is broken back into wholeness, and that through your son, Jesus Christ, we too can overcome. We do not need to fear because you are faithful and you are with us. Be with us this week, Lord. May we know of your faithfulness. May we cling to the, the ark or the boat you've given us to weather the storm. May we cling to your promises that are true. May we remember times that you've been faithful. May we look for ways that you're being faithful and may we share them with those around us so that others too can truly taste the rainbow of your goodness. We ask this in your name, amen.